All right, well, thanks for watching this uh, presentation here about uh, Open and Affordable Dental. Uh, this presentation is based on a Lunch and Learn that we're going to be giving on September 8th, 2022. The reason I mention that is there's some time-specific uh, information here, uh, such as which offices have availability for associates and for owners. Um, but all of this uh, information should be uh, good for the next couple of years. Obviously, um, uh, the presentation will up be updated on the website so you can check out which offices have associateships and ownership availability. Uh, so I just wanted to inter introduce myself. My name is Dr. Jason Stott, uh, and I started Open and Affordable Dental uh, about a year after dental school. Um, I graduated from uh, Buffalo, New York in 2013 and then came out to Colorado and started practicing. Uh, in a different system, obviously. Uh, I then decided I wanted to create an office where I could create longer-term relationships with patients, um, that I could have uh, a system that was based on patient care instead of, you know, money and things like that. So, um, you know, obviously money is super important in uh, private practice, but I wanted it to be mostly patient-focused. Uh, so, um, uh, started in 2014 and uh, found out how much work a private practice is. I didn't have systems. I didn't even really have a, a staff. Um, and so I just started putting together systems, manuals, uh, and, and things that would make uh, the next doctor who came in um, have a little bit less hard of a time in running and uh, creating a successful office. So, um, you know, over the first three years of Open and Affordable Dental, I was working 72 hours a week uh, clinically. So, uh, all of this information around Open and Affordable uh, didn't come from some manager who came in and said, hey, this is how I think we should run a dental office. This is really uh, you know, down in the trenches, tried and true uh, information that has helped me and several other dentists become su financially successful that have also we've stayed true to our initial mission, which is, you know, crazy, amazing patient care and to be able to treat patients, uh, you know, like we would our family. So uh, super proud of what we've what we've accomplished. Um, you know, at these lunch and learns, usually we have uh, open and affordable doctors who are there recruiting additional associates or potential owners. Uh, we also have support staff that are there from, we call it the corporate team, who help us in accomplishing our goals in creating a successful office. So some of the uh, corporate type of, of people here would be uh, trainers for the fronts, trainers for the assistants, uh, accounts receivable staff. Uh, we also have a 24-7 answering service. Uh, some of those people might be at your Lunch and Learn. And then we also have people that schedule for the specialties, so for oral surgeons and for the orthodontists. Um, so if you have a chance, try to talk with uh, uh, these people, the, the doctors that are there, and especially some of the corporate uh, people, um, because they will kind of interact with you and they have a lot of information on what they do to help you as a new doctor become successful. So um, I wanted to um, just, uh, you know, direct you to this uh, web page. So if you scan this QR code, it's going to take you to a web page um, that has basically all of the information that uh, you will need. And I'm going to show you this web page here. So it's actually this careers information, and you will use uh, the password careers. Inside of here, you're going to see a couple of documents. You're going to see um, a document here that actually has way more information than what we're going to be able to cover here on the uh, presentation. Uh, and it also has every single question that we've ever been asked by associates. It's really a very huge and important document. When you go out there to interview, even at 
uh, offices that are not open and affordable. It's great information so you can go to those interviews and know exactly what to ask. So please, please, please uh, access this information, read through it before you start the interview process at uh, wherever you decide to go. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, our associate contract here so you can see exactly all of the, the parameters around uh, what you're um, going to be looking for. Uh, all of these uh, contracts have gone through several versions of uh, potential associates who have had their professors look at it. They've also had their lawyers at it look at it. We've had our lawyers look at it. So a lot of good information there. Um, we also have recruiting videos. So this will be included in that recruiting video. Um, and then we also have uh, this presentation. So you can access the PDF of this pre presentation. Um, so, you know, I want you to, to really pay attention to this presentation uh, just for the fact that I, th this presentation, yes, it's about open and affordable, but it really gives you a baseline of what to start looking for in your career. Uh, unfortunately, I felt like every single opportunity out there uh, when I was coming out of dental school, I felt like every single opportunity out there was going to be amazing and it really didn't matter where you went. Uh, but I really believe that there are so many associates uh, that get stuck in a bad situation that it really takes them five to ten years to figure out uh, how to play this game of dentistry. And unfortunately, if you get into a bad system, your confidence uh, goes down. And I know of several associates who came into Open and Affordable and who had gone through other systems who were almost ready to get out of dentistry. That's how bad it is. So please pay attention so that you can set yourself up for success. Um, like I said, uh, what you're going to learn today is going to help you with uh, your future interviews uh, inside or outside of Open Affordable Dental. Okay. The other thing too is is take some information from some of the doctors that uh, uh, are here at your presentation, and uh, you know if they're from the school that you graduated from, or if they're in a location that you're looking to or, to work at. Uh, reach out to them. They would love to share anything that they know um, and they would love for you to see their clinic in action. So really try to network and uh, contact them. I'll give you their contact information here at the end of the uh, um, at the end of the at the end of the presentation. Okay. We're also going to try to leave 20 minutes uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, you know, usually lunch and learns are scheduled for about an hour. We're going to try to get this um, done in about 40 minutes so that you can have about 20 minutes to to interact with those doctors. So this is probably the most important slide that you've, I know that you guys have seen a ton of slides in your dental career, dental school career, uh, but this is probably the most important slide that you'll ever see, which uh, basically says this. Um, we have two lines here, okay? And this blue line is your monthly collections, okay? So, you know, when you start uh, out and, and you don't really even know what is good collections, but usually an average uh, dental student graduate and starts collecting about $20,000 a month. A very, very skilled dentist uh, can collect over 100000 a month. A lot of them are between fifty five and eighty five thousand okay um, I used to believe that oh hey if I'm an average dentist I am going to uh, I'm gonna be doing just fine well if you take a look at this red line this is actually your monthly expenses okay so you can see that your monthly expenses are usually roughly around thirty five thousand for your staff for your rent for your equipment for all of the supplies that you use okay so unfortunately and this this is before you pay yourself okay you pay yourself as a doctor so at 35,000 
you are just starting to break even, meaning you're paying your staff, but you're not paying yourself. So I thought that the average dentist was going to make 250000 by just producing, you know, forty to 45000 per month. That is absolutely not true. If you think that you can be an average dentist and make the income that you need to make in order to survive, uh, you're, you're, grossly and sorely uh, mis mistaken because you really need to be in the 65000 and higher range in order to make the money that you need to be able to pay back your student loans. So the goal of Open and Affordable is to take your dental school skills and as quickly as possible move you up to being a skilled dentist so that you can make the money that you need to make. So you're probably considering a lot of different uh, type of, of um, opportunities. And I've just highlighted some of the positives and some of the negatives of each type of uh, opportunity that you might be looking at. So we have private practice. We're talking about a single office. Uh, we're talking about a corporate run organization where you have no ownership in the office. They simply just pay you to come and show up and work. We have a DSO type of an organization where um, there's a mixture of ownership. They might own the building. They might take a royalty. They might take a percentage of the revenue. Um, but you're you're kind of an, uh, a potential owner in some portion of the practice. Okay, and then obviously we have public health. Uh, that could be at the VA. That could be at the prison systems. Um, so those are, are kind of the opportunities that are that are out there. Uh, something about private practice, I've been through private practice. When I bought Open and Affordable, it was essentially was uh, private practice. Super high stress. Uh, you're basically the lone wolf out there doing everything by yourself. Um, high reward, yes. Uh, if you work like crazy like I did 72 hours a week, you're going to make some good money. Um, but it comes at a huge uh, family cost and a huge uh, amount of stress. Obviously, large time investment, you're alone. Uh, you can basically do any treatment that you want. Uh, no one's looking over your shoulder. Corporate, uh, it can be emotionally taxing. Why? Because they're going to have quotas. You need to do 25 crowns a month. No matter who walks in your door, 25 crowns. So ethically, sometimes you don't sleep well at night because of those types of things. Uh, it can be a medium to a large time requirement depending on how much uh, the corporate sets up for you to uh, work on, on doing staff. Some people uh, don't have to do any staffing. Other people have to do a lot. Um, uh, obviously, you're going to have, because you are working for them, they're going to tell you exactly how many fillings you need to do per month, how many crowns. So there's definitely quotas. The income, usually about medium. Why? Because those the patients that walk in there usually figure out at some point that it's a big uh, sales job when they walk in there. So it's very hard to keep recare up. Okay, DSO, medium to high stress, pseudo ownership. What do I mean by that? A lot of times um, they're going to set up the situation where you don't actually own the real estate. They're, you're going to pay a high rent to them. Um, they're going to have a large royalty um, so that they basically capture as much revenue as possible out of you. Um, prescribed treatment, there, there's potential for prescribed treatment. Um, these one, the DSOs usually have a little bit less because, you know, you're a pseudo owner. So, but a lot of times they're going to set it up so that, uh, it's a big, huge specialist network. So they keep the specialist, uh, type of production. So they're going to force you to never do a root canal, never do a surgical extraction. Okay. Uh, public health, super low stress you go in there you know you're going to see your six to eight patients a day you're going to mostly refer as much out as possible you're going to have a lower uh, steady income um, and super predictable okay so uh let me just tell you about open and affordable dental um so you know because we're we're created by a doctor our focus has always been to be completely honest with patients. Uh, I think all of us, when we were in dental school, had this uh, you know, 
pretty good moral compass that we wanted to go out help people and we hope that uh, being super nice to people would um, would translate into financial success okay uh, we want to treat patients like family and I'm saying it here in the in this recruiting um, presentation and if you ever come and shadow me or or um, if you ever have any questions my response to you is what how would you treat that how would you treat your mother and then the answer to that patient's uh, prescribed treatment is going to be exactly the way that you would treat your own mother so every single ethical uh, question that we ever have we always answer it with what is right that's what we should do so it's so nice to be able to be in an organization that uh, really really emphasizes being super ethical being doing really really good uh, dental work because we want to treat uh, those patients just like we would want to treat our family um, and then because we do so much and we're encouraged to do as much as possible surgical extractions molar endo implants we gain the experience to solve complex problems some associates are kind of uh, thinking oh, okay so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna work be working with the owner doctor and the owner doctor is gonna take all of the root canals and all of the hard surgical extractions and I'm gonna be doing the profies absolutely not when you see a patient at the very beginning that's your patient you're gonna see that patient for every single thing uh, if they need a root canal you're gonna start that root canal yes if you can't get through it or you're having problems the owner doctor will step in and help you out but you need to get good so that you can do every single one patients buy into your confidence and if you are not good at those procedures or you're not efficient they're gonna pick up on that so um, you're encouraged to do uh, all of that and you're gonna get a ton of experience in doing complicated uh, procedures um, so our motto is super profound it's a it's a simple formula but it's really profound we are there to make friends and solve problems if you're someone who is doesn't have the greatest personality unfortunately people aren't going to come in the door if you have an amazing personality but you can't do very good dentistry people are going to figure out that all their feelings are falling out and they won't come back to you so you need to be someone who can make friends bring people in and then solve their problems do amazing dentistry that's the formula for success okay so the open and affordable difference so really we are trying to take our industry back there are so many uh, private equity uh, type groups out there that are coming into the dental field we are owned and run by doctors every decision that we make is uh, basically for the good of patients and for doctors okay uh, so there are no managers there's no one that's coming in there and telling you that you have to do this amount of crowns no we're going to do as many crowns as need to happen on the patients that come into our office so we have clinical autonomy um, you know obviously the big thing is is with uh, with a lot of new new graduating dentists they're apprehensive about their clinical skills um, so some organizations kind of pigeonhole you into learning all of the clinical. So you're going to hear this phrase a lot. Uh, we'll go ahead and run all the administrative so that you can concentrate at what you're good at, which is the clinical. Okay. The unfortunate thing about that is if you're ever planning on getting into an ownership type of a situation later on in your career, you will never have the confidence to be able to do that because they're only allowing you to see the clinical so with open and affordable you're going to get a ton of clinical experience and administrative experience we call open and affordable it's an entire practice residency you're going to learn how to run 35 patients in a 12-hour shift you're also going to learn how to run a financially successful office you're going to be trained on every function of the front office the accounts receivable uh, how to do the financial numbers at the end of the month you're going to learn within six months how to run an entire practice okay 
you have a huge support, supportive community of other doctors. We have all of these uh, doctor threads on our messaging app. So if you ever have any questions, you have direct access to the oral surgeon. You have direct access to orthodontist. You have uh, a direct access to your owner doctor. And you also have direct access to all of the other uh, doctors within Open and Affordable. So you can ask any question, clinical, uh, administrative, and you're going to have 10 answers within a few minutes. Okay. Um, like I mentioned, you're going to be encouraged to perform all GP procedures, including implants, molar root canal, surgical extractions. Uh, I can't count how many times uh, doctors are super excited about doing implants. So what do we do? They find their first implant case, and then uh, we go in there, and I basically hold their hand as they push the implant drill into the bone for the first time. And now these doctors um, are have placed two, three hundred implants. Okay, so uh, same thing with root canal surgical extractions. You have a hand to help you uh, get through those first um, procedures until you become amazing at it. But obviously, it takes a lot of repetition. I tell everyone until you get through your hundredth uh, procedure, you're still practicing. So we always try to get people through their hundredth procedure. So uh, twelve-hour work. Um, uh, 12 hour shifts, uh, work life balance, super important. Okay. So what we've set up is a system of, of, um, uh, clinical uh, schedules so that we can have a work life balance. So we work three 12 hour shifts per week. Okay. So we, we have basically set up the office into a beginning of the week staff and an end of the week staff. So the doctor usually works with their staff okay there might be a little bit of of changing but usually it's the same doctor with the same staff just helps as far as uh personalities gelling and things like that so the schedules are uh if you're a beginning of the week staff you're going to be working alternating monday tuesday wednesdays or monday tuesday saturdays okay um, so you're working two Saturdays a month. Uh, if you're an end of the week staff, you're going to be working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, alternating. Okay. So the office is open 12 hours a day and it's also open six days a week. Why is that super important? We want to capture economies of scale. If you're an owner doctor, you want that office open all the time. Uh, but another big huge reason is you want to have continuity of care. You want to be available for those blue collar workers that are coming out of their job and are only available after 5 p.m. You want to be available for them on the weekends. You also want to be able, when you're out of the office, to not have to worry about office type things. So if you did a, a, a full mouth extraction at the end of your clinical week, guess what? You could actually be on your, on your vacation on the beach and not have to worry about that patient bleeding. Why? Because if they do have an emergency, they're going to come into the office and the next day the office is open and the other doctor will take your emergencies. Okay. Work life balance. You don't understand this as a dental student, but uh, dentistry, real life dentistry is hugely emotionally taxing, hugely physically taxing. You need those days to get off, to recover from the emotional and physical stress of those of your clinical week. The other thing too is because we start at 7:30, uh, you're not going to run into traffic in the morning. Because we end at 7:30, you're not going to run into traffic at, at night. So you're saving yourself time. Uh, you you only have to get ready for work three days a week. Uh, you don't have to fight traffic and you have four day weekends every single week. Uh, some people are stressed out about that 12 hour work day, but um, as doctors have started, they're like, oh my goodness, I would never be able to go to five eights. Uh, way too much, uh, way too many days doing dentistry. Now we do get uh, qu questions occasionally. Can I work more than three days? You absolutely can. We would love for people to work uh, 72 hours a week, just like I did for three years. Uh, good luck with that. You're going to find out that it's very hard on your body, but I don't want to discourage it because there's always those gunners out there that want to work more. And we super encourage that. Uh, we want uh, with open and affordable, we want to help you build a successful and profit profitable practice. 
well, how do you get there? You need to have lots of patients, okay? So we really concentrate on the full cycle of patient care, which is we want to concentrate on the number of new patients. We want to uh, concentrate on the patient experience so that those patients come back. And we're super big on recare so that your office is always full with hygiene patients who don't have to have any out, outlays of money out of their pocket because it's all covered at 100%. And you're always having someone come into your office, okay? So... With Open and Affordable, we, we basically have designed it so that there is an opportunity for every type of position that you want. So if you're coming out of dental school and you're a little bit apprehensive about your clinical skills, mentorship might be for you, meaning you're going to be working with another owner doctor who has uh, been through the trenches, has done every type of procedure, and you're going to be in the office with them. And uh, if you get into any problems, they're, they're basically two feet away, okay? Uh, associateship, meaning you're gonna be going into potentially the same office as the owner doctor, but might be on the other side of the week. So you'll probably work with that doctor for a few weeks side by side, and then you'll go in and work all alone, okay? Or with potentially another associate. Some doctors don't like to work with other doctors. This might be your uh, the way to go, okay? A hundred percent ownership. When you um, buy an open and affordable practice, you are one hundred percent owner of that entity. You're the only one on the entity with the state, with the IRS. Uh, you own a hundred percent of your practice. Okay. Multi practice. If you get to the point where you want to expand and you want to own multiple offices, and you'll see here at the end of our presentation, there are many doctors who have gone to this uh, level and it's super encouraged. Uh, just back to this ownership, how long does it take you to become an owner? Uh, you need to go through at least a six month associateship and then after we've kind of vetted uh, you out, making sure that you know how to run all of the systems, you're actually profitable, then we'll let you buy and there's plenty of ownership opportunities. Okay, Real estate, again, Many of the uh, DSO organizations do not let you buy real estate. Why? Because they're in the real estate game. Open and affordable is the only one that I know where you are actually encouraged to own your own real estate. And we will help you find and locate and, and start practices inside of your own real estate. The big opportunity with open and affordable dental is once you buy your real estate, open and affordable guarantees that there will be an open and affordable practice within your real estate uh, for the rest of your life. Okay. And I also mentioned this beyond, there's going to be another more comprehensive uh, presentation that talks about where we're going beyond all of these opportunities. Okay. So how does open and affordable help um, us become uh, be become successful? I want to go over a really quick formula here on how to make money in dentistry. Uh, you have your number of patients, uh, you multiply that times the number of procedures that you do on the patients, that is your revenue. Then you subtract your expenses and that's your profit. Okay. So um, with patients, we are um, very keen towards making sure that our reputation is as good as possible. Go out there and check out our Google reviews. Uh, you're going to see that we're 4.8s up to 5.0 at our offices. Why? Because we have systems to make sure that patients are happy. We take very, very seriously any negative feedback that comes back, and we try to build systems around avoiding those negative patient uh, experiences. Okay? Availability. We're open those 72 hours. Why? Because we want to be able to attract as many patients as possible so that we can treat them just as best as possible. Uh, a typical private practice office is getting 20 to 30 new patients a month. Uh, a typical open and affordable office is getting between 150 and 300 new patients a month. It's just easier to make money when you have all of those new patients coming in. Patient experience. Everything uh, that we do has... Uh, is systemized. We're trying to um, basically measure scientifically what, uh, how the patients react to this particular situation versus this situation. And then if 6 out of 10 have a positive response here versus 4 out of 10 there, 
guess what? We're going to go with the 6 out of 10. And we're going to always dial in on the best uh, patient experience, given every little point of feedback that we can get. Answering service. It's amazing. We have 24-7 answering service. Uh, a patient is in pain or someone who's never been to our office is in pain calls on a Sunday night, they're going to get a live person that answers them that uh, is a, someone from Open and Affordable Dental and can get them scheduled on your schedule um, the next day that it's open. So it's super nice. Uh, some of our offices, when they're just starting, they're, they're closed. Uh, they're only open for three days, so they might be closed a couple of days. They come in on their Monday or their first uh, day of the clinical week, and they have all of these emergencies scheduled on their schedule. How much easier is it for them to make money when, there's, when their schedule is, um, is busy? Recall. We're super big on recall. Uh, the best dentistry that's ever performed is that, is that dentistry that's uh, done in the hygiene operatory. Uh, preventative care is covered at 100%, so we're, we're really big on that. We're in network with everyone under the sun, uh, including Medicaid in Colorado. Um, it just helps for our blue collar workers if they ever change, if they ever go from one school district employer employee to another, uh, they'll still be in network. It makes it super huge uh, for us to attract um, the number of new patients that we need in order to grow. Uh, marketing, uh, check out uh, you know our SEO. Uh, Google us, see if you see us uh, ranked highly. Um, one of the, the important things is that we're all trying to figure out how to attract new patients, uh, making our offices super presentable, uh, making sure that our offices are super clean, uh, making sure that we're found in good locations. Um, all of this helps us gain those, those, new, uh, th those new patients. Okay. Procedures, mentorship. We talked about that. How are you going to figure out how to do a second molar root canal? You're going to need some help. Uh, that's why you're there uh, with someone holding your hand. GP focused. Uh, we want the GPs to be the quarterbacks. The specialists are essentially our hired guns. They do the stuff that we don't want to do. If you want to get into full bonies, uh, go ahead and do full bonies. If you don't want to do full bonies, guess what? The specialists will come in there and do it. But you're encouraged to do as much dentistry as you possibly can. GP should usually be able to do 85 to 90 percent of all dentistry that walks into your office. Same day dentistry. We super encourage same day dentistry. Uh, no one goes into King Supers and looks at grapes and decides they're going to come back later uh, and um, and buy those grapes. People want their problem fixed that day. So we're going to show you how to run multiple columns and how to do even three root canals at the same time. It's not out of the realm of, of possibility. Um, doctor autonomy, you get to choose what you're going to do. There's no one that is over your neck telling you, and you can ask any of the doctors uh, that are present at this Lunch and Learn uh, or at any of the Lunch and Learns, if Dr. Stott or anyone has told them that they need to start doing more crowns or they need to start doing no, uh, more fillings. Absolutely uh, something that was created out of managers, not doctors. We know that there's a clinical need for something, we're going to do it. If there's no clinical need, we're not going to do it. Okay, specialists. We have, like I said, we have access to specialists so that all of those procedures that we don't want to do, they can do. Expenses. How do we help you reduce expenses? Best practices. We have um, relationships with a credit card processing company that charges you one percent less than what you would get if you were just a solo practice. Okay. Um, we have a supply list. We vetted out every single thing down to the cotton rolls on what's the best value for your money. So you don't have to think and you don't have to go through the vetting process like I did over three years to find the best value for everything. And, and this supply list is always being updated as, as doctors find better and better deals. You are not required to go to a Henry Shine or to a Patterson to buy your supplies. If you can procure them at a place that's cheaper or are a better value, we encourage that. Uh, staff training. We have manuals. Our assistant manual is maybe 180 pages. It tells assistants every tiny little thing that they need to do in order to run it. We have corporate trainers that can help you train a brand new person off the street. So you don't have to go and hire someone at $30 an hour to be able to uh, run your office. We can get someone off the street. You can have corporate help. And within a couple of months, you have a full functioning assistant at a lower 
costs than uh, if you went and uh, brought someone in who has 20, 30 years experience. In-house repairs. Again, we have our own repair uh, company so that when you need, uh, you have a, a leak in your air water syringe tip, instead of going in and paying $200 um, for them to repair a $5 part, uh, you can you can call our service and they'll come in and, and repair it at a lot uh, more cost effective. Okay, and then profit. Uh, all of the offices uh, run off the same uh, financial tracking mechanism so that you can look at other doctors and be like, oh, look at that doctor. Look at how financially successful they are. I want to go and shadow them. Um, so all of our offices are super transparent and we can um, uh, compare and contrast and figure out better ways to do uh, to become more profitable. Okay, we also have tax reduction strategies. All of us are uh, trying things in order to reduce our tax burden, so we our take home is as high as possible. Um, so I just wanted uh, to go over some questions that you should be considering when you go out and interview with either open and affordable dental or with other other offices okay how many patients are you going to see um, at open and affordable dental at the beginning the first day that you're in in a clinic you're probably going to see 10 patients now that's super daunting to a dental student but uh, the assistants do a lot of that work and it's usually going to be recall profies okay um, but very quickly depending on how quickly you ramp up, you need to be seeing 35 patients a day. Um, it, the, the fact of it is, unfortunately, um, with in-network dentistry, um, when you are seeing one column of, of patients, you're really, see, you're really losing money. You start breaking even when you get to seeing two columns of, of patients. And then you become profitable when you see three columns of patients. So um, you need to be looking at the, the schedule and making sure that that practice has the ability to provide you up to three columns of patients. Some uh, private practitioners are gonna give you one operatory to work at. It's basically impossible for you to make money in that situation, okay? So be aware and, and take a look at uh, their schedules, okay? What procedures are you gonna do? Are you gonna be in a situation where uh, the doctor's gonna do all of the bigger procedures, all the root canals, or are you gonna have to uh, refer those out to specialists? Uh, I'm just saying that at Open and Affordable, you're gonna be encouraged to do all of the procedures. Um, and it's just more, it's just easier to make money when you can do it. It's also better for your patients if you're able to do every single uh, procedure for them. How many days, hours will I work? Maybe you want, want to work 40 hours a week over, over five days. Um, so just kind of consider that and just consider you know, what, what the amount of time it's going to take for you to get ready for work, how much time it's going to take for you to get home, and then divide your total salary um, divided by the total hours so that you can get really an hourly salary so that you can compare apples to apples, okay? Um, talk to them about their op opportunities for ownership. Uh, a lot of private practitioners say that they're going to be available for retirement within a couple years and then it extends out to five and six years and it's really not what you are looking for. Like I said, it opened affordable uh, six months and then you can be an owner if you're amazing, okay? Uh, What's the opportunity for real estate? What's the opportunity to receive the royalty? Uh, if you become a multi-practice uh, owner with open and affordable, you will uh, start receiving royalty from the offices that you're opening. Um, are you able to uh, hire specialists and keep some of their production? At open and affordable, you do. You keep the um, uh, a portion of the revenue from the specialists. Uh, you also, when you employ associates as an owner, you get to keep uh, revenue from those associates and also from hygienists. Uh, what is the compensation? Is there a base at Open and Affordable? If you go through the um, uh, the contracts or the contract that I showed you at the very beginning, you're going to see the two types of compensation uh, that you're going to get. So we have a mentorship uh, contract and we also have an associate contract. With the mentorship pro, uh, contract, there is a $55 an hour base that does not fall off, okay? So you'll always be making $55 an hour, but you'll always make the greater of 
30% of your collections minus your lab fee times 30%. So the opportunity to make more than 55 hours, $55 an hour is, is absolute. Uh, in fact, very few people stay on their face for more than uh, a couple of months at the very beginning of their career, okay? The associate contract is very similar, but if there's a $65 an hour base, it only lasts for three months, then there's no base. But again, it's the greater of uh, your collections minus your lab fee times 30% um, or the $65 an hour. So when you come out of school, you're always guaranteed a base for three months. But you need to concentrate on becoming break even and making money as soon as possible, which is why it behooves you to to shadow and to really concentrate on your career. If you think that you're just going to show up to work, go home, and and not uh, and and still uh, be way over your base, it's not going to happen. You got to really uh, work hard. Okay, um, so what can you do now? Come out to our offices. Uh, uh, call the office. Um, I'll give you the contact information for all of the doctors. Spend a few hours with those doctors and watch watch the offices in action. Are they busy? Uh, do you agree clinically with the doctor? Do you agree ethically with the doctor? Um, do that with non-open and affordable offices. I think I think the big selling point for um, people coming into open and affordable is is the people who shadow non-open and affordable offices and then come in and shadow open and affordable offices because then they're like oh my goodness i just felt like it was it was an amazing flow in open and affordable i felt like the doctors were really there about the patients um they were super having fun and um i could see that they were a lot busier so so please uh shadow super important okay meet the owners the associates talk with the staff uh, when you go into your office make sure you talk with the staff we're talking with the staff and saying hey what did you think about this person why because the way that you treat the staff is the way that uh, you're gonna you're gonna treat the patient so be super kind of the staff uh, find opportunities with tailwinds what am I saying if you're gonna find uh, uh, a place that has a million other competition that's going to be a harder place to make as much money. The further you get away from uh, the urban areas and the more rural you get, the easier your life is going to be. I, I mean, people are like, oh, it's going to be a little bit easier. No, like twice as easy. So, um, you know, try to be able to maybe live at the edge of the city if you have to live at the city in the city and travel an hour. Uh, if you have the city in your rearview mirror uh, as you travel to work, you're going in the right direction. Um, and then also sign early. Uh, the best opportunities with the best doctors usually happen in the fall. Um, you know, I, I find it interesting uh, people who graduate or even like after the reb, they start looking for their job. It's like all of the, all of the good opportunities have been taken. So, so try to do all of this in the fall before you have to take all of your boards and and sign with your uh, uh, your office, and then you don't you, you can just basically laugh at all of your other uh, friends who are scrambling uh, in the winter and the spring trying to find their um, their office. Okay. Um, always check out the the re the office and the company reputation. Um, uh, my first system that I was in, the the company didn't have an amazing patient reputation, and I was like, whatever. But it was grinding trying to think about, oh my goodness, I need more new patients, I need more new patients. But there's a barrier to entry because there was a bad reputation. So be super on top of checking out the reputation. Check out our reputation. Check out the doctor's reputation. Check out the office, the company. Super important. Uh, but just, yeah, your success depends 100% on you. I used to say, you know, it's it's 90% the doctor and 10% the organization or 90% or the doctor and 10% the location absolutely false we have amazingly successful offices that are in terrible locations why it's the doctor the doctor is the only thing that matters um, so you can be on the corner lot and be a terrible dentist and you're going to be completely a complete failure so so it's it's up to you to make sure that you can be successful. And we have simply just given you the tools to get to that successful point as quickly as possible and for you to live your dream just as successfully as possible, okay? So just a few takeaways here. Um, you know, 
Open and Affordable Dental is is made by dentists, uh, run by dentists who really want to treat our patients as good as as possible. Um, I'm super thankful that we haven't ever strayed from our mission, and I'm also really thankful, especially seeing other systems, that we can treat patients honestly and we can be financially successful. Um, I actually thought uh, in, during the very beginning of my career that that did not exist in the world of dentistry, that you had to uh, sell treatment that wasn't necessary. And uh, I, I really felt unethical about that. So um, I'm super thankful that we've been able to find this formula. And, and it hasn't been easy. Uh, we have honed and honed and honed our system to make this patient experience just as good as possible. Okay, um, We don't have any uh, management private equity that comes in there and tells us as doctors what to do. Um, the more private equity, the more managers, the more uh, of these types of people that are um, surrounding your office, those people are taking money out of your pocket. So we can uh, make as much money as possible by not having those uh, those people around. Okay, uh, open and affordable. It's the best of both the group and the private practice. We get to choose what to do. Uh, we get to um, treat our patients just as best as possible. But when we're out of the office, there's another crew that's taking care of those patients. Okay, quality of life, 12-hour shifts, four-day weekends, um, help, um, manuals, um, systems, processes, um, all of those things. You know, uh, a good income. All of those things add to a quality of life. And you're encouraged to do only what you would do on your own mother. So super, super ethical. Um, also, I think a big, huge thing is, is the unlimited potential. Uh, the reason I got out of my first system and, and started open and affordable was I didn't have access to uh, owning real estate. I didn't have access to owning 100% of my practice. Um, those types of things um, are, you know, glass ceilings can kill certain types of doctors. So there's really unlimited potential with open and affordable. Um, there's there's roles for every type of uh, person that you want to be. If you want to be an associate, hey, there's days where I only want to be an associate. I don't want to be an owner. So there's roles for associates. There's roles for uh, people who need their hand held right out of dental school. Um, mentorship. So whatever role that you feel is best for you um, during your career, uh, those are available. Okay. So what type of dentist are we looking for? Basically, we're looking for humble, hardworking dentists. Um, everything else, your clinical skills, we can teach that. We can teach you how to do a root canal. We can teach you how to do a filling. We can even uh, teach you how to talk to patients. But if you're not humble and if you're not hardworking, it's just simply not going to work out. We've tried, just doesn't work. Okay, you need to be committed to doing amazing dentistry. Like like I said, make friends, solve problems. If you're not solving problems, you're not going to be able to. Um, uh, you're not going to be able to have a, a big uh, dental practice. Okay, you also need to be able to uh, do any dentistry very well today. All of our patients need to. Or, or wanting same-day dentistry. I talked to you about the grape situation at King Supers. Um, you need to be able to, and King Supers is the, the grocery store here in Colorado, but you need to be able to do dentistry same day. I know that it would stress you out if you're doing a root canal and someone came in and they said that they needed a surgical extraction. You need to be able to say yes at every single patient. Uh, we don't have treatment planners. Uh, a huge component of being able to do same-day dentistry uh, is for the doctors to be able to discuss finances with patients. It's super, it's super awesome. Uh, you're going to find uh, open and affordable doctors are like, oh my goodness, how could you ever work in a system where you're not, you're not talking about finances? Um, it's, it's really amazing for the patients to know that the doctor's like, yeah, your crown's going to be 800. Do you want to get it going? Yes. You're, you're numbing the patient within 10 seconds. Okay. You need to be confident. Patients uh, read your confidence. If you're not confident, uh, they're not going to do any procedures. Um, how do you gain confidence? By doing a lot of dentistry. You're going to do a lot of dentistry at Open and Affordable Dental.
And you need to be someone who works well with staff. If you're going to come in and say that you're the doctor and they're the staff, guess what? You're going to be working alone. You're going to be working like you did in dentistry, doing your own suctioning. You need to be able to get uh, work well with staff who honestly does way more physical labor than we do and uh, you know are with the patients a lot more than we are. And so we need to be, uh, you know, we, we're looking for people that work well with staff, okay? So who are we recruiting? Um, when you look at your own dental class, you can say, let's, let's just categorize them. There's, there's a certain percent that are specializing. Uh, there are certain percent that are those GP overachievers that could specialize, but they really want to be general practitioners. Then there's just the average dentist. Um, you know, they come to school, uh, they do their thing, um, but hey, maybe they're not burning the midnight oil um, on the weekends. And then there's the below average or the apathetic dentist, and we all know who those people are. You probably wouldn't want them in your mouth, okay? So who are we looking for? We're looking for those GP overachievers and average dentists who have the desire to be better. I'm going to be honest, we're also looking for those people who are considering special specializing. A lot of those specialists are thinking, well, I want to make twice what the average GP uh, makes. Well, guess what? At Open and Affordable, our owners make twice what the average GP makes. So why would you specialize and never be able to create a relationship with the patient? Why would you want to go in there and do full bony extractions every single day when you could just be doing fillings like us and have a better work-life balance? So we're looking for those special people that are specializing, the GP overachievers. And if you're an average dentist, we can work with you if you want to get better. Um, if you're an average dentist who wants to get better, we absolutely are looking for you. But if you're an average dentist who is, is thinking that your average uh, um, amount of effort is going to work longer term, it's not open and affordable. It's private practice. Uh, it's just not going to work. We're never going to be able to make it financially work for us. And so really those average dentists or those below average or apathetic dentists, I really would encourage you to go into specialties where you're going to make a higher dollar per procedure and you don't have to talk with patients, you uh, don't have to create relationships with patients or go into public health because there you're guaranteed a salary and uh, basically the people that show up in your dental office are forced to be there. So, um, Uh, so here are our offices as of 2022, um, and, and you can see here that we have mentorships available, uh, we have ownerships available, and so you can take a look here, um, all of the mentorship offices here, and then the blue ones are the ownerships uh, offices, okay? So every practice here that is listed ownership available also has mentorship and associateships available. So just consider... Um, all of those and you can you can go back to our uh, our website and go to this presentation and check out the latest and greatest of version of this presentation so that you can get um, uh, the offices that interest you okay so again scan in the QR code you'll go to that web page the password is careers and then uh, if you would like to you can email us at careers at open affordable.com or if you want to talk to a specific doctor, uh, especially these owner doctors, what you'll do is all of them have their last name at openandaffordable.com. So for example, me, Dr. Stott, you would simply email stott at openandaffordable.com and it'll go to my personal open and affordable email. Okay. So um, you can reach out to any of the, the doctors on the following slide, ask questions, shadow, and like I said, read that Open Affordable Dental Opportunity Packet, and you'll be amazed at all of the information that's in there, okay? So uh, here is all of our doctors uh, and their locations, okay? Uh, you can see their designation as far as the school that they graduated from. So Dr. Barkoff, if you're a CU graduate, he went through the exact same education that you did. And you can see we have Dr. Piper, came through UMKC, I came through Buffalo, Dr. Zaret came from Virginia. So you can see all of those um, uh, doctors, where they are located, and, and then reach out to them. Okay, so uh, you, we'll usually open this up to uh, questions, and this is really the most important portion of the, the 
presentation is really getting a feedback from you as far as uh, what you guys are looking for. Um, you know, get, ask any experiences that we have coming out of uh, our particular dental school, um, what we've learned from Open and Affordable, what we like about Open and Affordable, what we don't like about Open and Affordable, uh, what we like about uh, dentistry. Uh, any single question that you have um, is is fair game. So thank you so much for um, listening to this presentation. Uh, I just want to end with you know my um, true belief that there isn't a better system out there than open and affordable dental for doctors and patients. We've tried to take every single um, scenario and and build something that is amazing for us. Uh, I can truly say that I have never had to do anything unethical uh, inside of Open and Affordable Dental. Um, I've only encouraged other doctors to be just as ethical as, as possible. And we've created a huge uh, uh, you know, reputation uh, in Colorado um, around patient care and we have these amazing support uh, staff to help us along the way. And um, I'm really, really proud of what we've uh, created. And I'd be super privileged to, um, to hire all of you who are hardworking and are humble. Thank you so much.